What we mean by the scientific method is, is only, insofar as it is, is method, for the second half of the scientific process. Um, it, in other words, it tells us how to test our ideas when we've had them. It doesn't tell us anything about how we might go about getting the good ideas, framing the hypothesis in the first place. So uh, what I decided to do in preparation for the three or four years of preparation before writing Poetry, Music and Science was to talk with um, as many scientists and mathematicians and engineers as I could get my hands on and get them to tell me, I, I, I say something like, think about the, the scientific discovery or the theory or the experiment or the, the insight that you've been involved with, that, of which you're most proud. Now, but don't explain the answer to me. Don't explain the neatly polished version. Tell me the story of how you got there. How did you think about this, this in the first place? Was it the function of a protein? Was it the, the, the structure of an astronomical object around a black hole that was causing the strange radiation? Was it whatever, whatever was it? Was it the, the, some magnetic behavior, some animal behavior, whatever it was? And as a sort of control experiment, I decided at the same time what I should do is to talk with artists and poets and composers and writers and novelists about their creative process as well. Um, just so I could tease out the differences and the commonalities between the two. I discovered everywhere there's these rich experiences of ideation, forming a distant idea, a vague idea of a theory or um, an understanding of, 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 a, of, a, a science, of a scientific observation, and then the slow formulation of what might be responsible, and then realising we were completely wrong and, and we're trying five different things and none of them works and getting very frustrated and um, but not getting anywhere and then just dropping the whole thing and then perhaps the next day or perhaps the next week or perhaps next year um, they, they've been forward and they tell me well Tom it's strange you know I was getting off a bus or in a shower or on a run or on a mountaintop didn't matter where well it didn't matter there were moments were interesting and then suddenly I thought, oh, how foolish. No, this is the way. This is the way it must be. This, this wonderful aha moments. And scientists will tell you, these, these, are, these are the moments we live by. These moments by which things become fog clears, the mist lifts, the confusion vaporizes. Testimonies to this have run all through history. Now the interesting thing is the stories my artist and composer, poet friends, were telling me were precisely the same structurally. There were important differences. I don't want to be naive about saying science and arts are the same. But the process of ideation discovery, with its ups and downs of frustrations and attempts, the leaving of the conscious effort to one side, the reception almost as gift of all that unconscious work, and the rapturous joy of, 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 of being there in the end, including the emotional tangling with the creative process that's just important in science as in art, that was why I couldn't write the book I first set out to do, which was to write down my accounts of scientific creativity I'd found out about, write down the accounts, all this rich account of artistic creativity, and uh, compare the two. That is a book that wouldn't let itself to be written uh, because the two are far more entangled. Instead, creativ creativity does characterise itself in different ways, but they're not aligned along the arts and the sciences. They're aligned in other very interesting ways.